Well, Ron, this is a fascinating vehicle, uh, and and and, you, and the term is a universal carrier. That's correct. And on, I see on the on the plates here, Ford and Canada. That's right. These vehicles were built in, uh, to name a few, England, Australia, Canada, America. Right. Different variants, but all based around the same theme. Yeah. Uh, and all derived, I suppose, from the earlier Bren gun carriers. People, people erroneously call these Bren gun carriers sometimes. They're actually a universal carrier because they're designed to um, not just carry a Bren gun. They, yeah, could, yeah, be, sure. they could be other bit, uh, weapons, or it, some even had a two-pounder gun mounted in them. Oh, right. But um, just a, a light armoured uh, carrier, really, for getting troops and equipment and weapons, and also uh, heavily used in reconnaissance. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, we've got the gun. What, what gun have we got over on? That's the a brain gun. That's the brain gun. Yeah. And then up on the so top I've got, here, yeah, we've various got rifles weapons and, and definitely uh, weapons Sten over there. Sten gun and, and 303 rifles. And what's this over on that? What's that, that on the side? That's there? a smoke discharger. Oh, so right. what they what they had was kind of a, a can, like a, uh, an overgrown bean can, if you like, went into the muzzle, yeah. uh, fired with a blank, which would give it a range of, you know, perhaps a few hundred yards or yeah. a couple of hundred yards to generally sm uh, spread a smoke screen. Oh, right. uh, that's, that's what that was used for. Okay, now, right, we're on tracks. Yeah. So, the, the, it, it, just like a tank, skid steer it, type No, it's thing? not skid steer. It, it, it's, it's a strange arrangement with these things. The, <clears throat> there's a rack and pinion runs across the, uh, the uh, through the sort of centre. Oh, right. And, went, and, and, a, and an ordinary, like a lorry steering wheel. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that. And how, how these things steered was what they called a warp track system so as you go down the road during gentle bends you actually turn the steering wheel the rack moves the hull um, from side to side which will move the weight of the vehicle onto one track the track would bow and it would gently do a you could weave it down a road oh, yeah. but if you came to a situation where you needed to slew it yeah. you know do a heavy turn yeah. you then turn the steering wheel some more which would operate the brake on one side or the other to give it a slew effect oh I see they were a very strange system and they're very awkward to drive at if you're shunting them at very slow speeds because yeah, it, it takes a lot of um, effort to steer the things. Now, engine wise, what have it, we got engine wise? Engine's in the back, um, engine and transmission are in the back, facing forward in a conventional manner. The radiator's behind the driver. Right. Uh, you've then got a Ford flat V8 engine. Um, again, they came in various sizes. Uh, off the top of my head, I can't give you those sizes, yeah, but they, yeah. they um, um, uh, this is in, in here is an American made one. Right. Well, uh, how many different versions? Well, how many different versions of engines did they use then? Well, there, there was a, I think there was four or five different variants and sizes. They, they increased the horsepower as they needed to, um, and so on. The, 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 the cylinder head bolt configuration was different on oh. variant, variant, different variants. So, and so en engine on this is how many cylinders? It's a V8. This is a V8 yeah. engine. Flat uh, side valve V8. Right. Okay. So, so, so it's a big it's, old unit. Isn't it's it? a typical engine that they they used in a lot of Canadian and American vehicles. Uh, so it was quite a popular popular motor during the yeah, war. Yeah, they used yeah. them in the V8 pilot cars. You know, oh, it's right. the same engine basically, yeah. but different variants. I say different sizes. Okay. Now, what have we got in this section here? We've got uh, another radio. Yeah, set another here. 19 set. This is a fully working and receiving, transmitting and receiving set. Yeah. Um, and uh, various weapons. These leather cases here are ammunition pouches oh, to right. carry uh, Bren gun pa um, magazines. Oh yes. Um, with various boxes, uh, ammunition boxes. Over in the other corner is a chore horse uh, generator set to charge the batteries up for the wireless. Oh yeah, there's another position, another, another rifle over on that yeah. section. Yeah, uh, this is a, an anti-aircraft Bren gun mount. Oh right. So you could uh, establish that in or out the vehicle to um, uh, to to either use a, 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 a tripod for a, for a um, Bren gun, yeah. and in another situation as an anti-aircraft uh, oh, right. as Bren gun. Yeah. Now, what markings we got on this one, then, Ron? Uh, this is again 43rd Wessex, yeah. but fourth Dorsets this time. All right. Just to be different. Yeah. Um, now, come on. What does this sound like when it's running? Oh, it's a, be it's a beautiful burble, the V8 sound <laughs> that you, uh, you would expect from a V8. Um, unfortunately, I can't start it upright this minute. No, it's, 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 uh, th this is lovely. But it's, uh, how, how, how many years to restore this? 
Um, it, well, it's again, it's another work in progress. I, when I bought it, it was running. The gearbox was pretty shot and the clutch, uh, but all the tracks and steering were good. Um, and it was, but it was just basically an empty, kind of like an empty skip. Yeah. So every bracket box um, fitting in here has had to be sourced or manufactured and copied from originals. Yeah. I was very fortunate. I've got a friend who's got one of these, a very complete one, and he was able to lend me parts. Oh, you know, wow. like these stowage boxes. This is a this is a stowage box for a spare Bren gun barrel. Oh yes. Um, and it's it's been reproduced by a local firm. Um, as an exact copy of uh, an original. That always helps, doesn't it, when the, when the guys are working yeah. from, from an original item, isn't it? A lot of these vehicles were were used after the war, war, especially by farmers and woodsmen who sometimes chopped the armour off them because they didn't need it. Yeah. They just needed a, a, an all-terrain vehicle. Sort of, yeah, like a basic vehicle. And of course all the, all the nice little fittings and rifle clips were of no consequence to them, yeah. so they probably ended up throwing them, a lot of it away. Yes. Um, and you you just can't go to the Bryn Gun stowage box shop and buy a new one. No. So <laughs> you, uh, right. you've got to manufacture now, one. Just refresh my memory. What was the age of this again? This is 1944. This 44. one. Yeah. Okay. Now, interesting item over there. I do believe that uh, th this vehicle were, would tow something That's like right. that. Is that correct? That's a. The Rod, just explain a little bit about this because I mean we've just gone from the uh, the Universal. That would have towed something like this? Yeah, very, very probably, and I've got photos of them being towed by the Universal Carrier. Yeah. Squeezed in the corner here, it's a two-pounder anti-tank gun, or field gun. Uh, again, another rare piece of equipment. I know of about six or seven in the country, and every one is in a museum. Oh, right. and I, at the moment, I'm the only, I, I only know this one as the only one being in private, uh, private ownership. Private, private ownership. Um, very nice indeed. Very nice indeed, and and this mechanism here, this is this is where the shells will be loaded up. That's right. That's the breech. And this? That's a that's what they call a cocking lanyard, designed. Um, for, funny enough, I've only recently acquired that from Australia. Oh right. A friend of mine sent me that from Australia. It's an original, and he explained to me that if the round for whatever reason didn't fire, mm -hmm. like going back to a dud firework, yeah, you. If you put your hand near it and it suddenly goes off, it could have your hand off. Oh, so right. they use that cocking lanyard as a safety factor, so that if, if you had to recock it, you could do it with that toggle without oh, putting your hand it. near the breech. Oh, I'm with you. Because of the recoil would, you know, yeah. hit you and damage your arm. Yeah. Um, yeah again, this thing was derelict in South Africa. It was actually concreted in the ground outside a museum in South Africa. I got to hear about it and a. And a, a, a large um, military dealer in England uh, bought a load of exhibits from this museum when it closed down and actually threw this in the skip in the in the um, container All right. uh, they thought it was worth bringing back they sold it to me and I have spent hours and hours and hours not just me but some friends and uh, friendly engineers and making parts and generally bringing it back to the condition it's in now. Yeah, it's lovely. Still a work in progress. There's some things I'm not happy about. Um, but I've just acquired a rusted ammo locker because that's not the correct thing on there. And I've just acquired one from Australia. That's being repaired by a professional at the moment yeah. um, for me to reinstate. So again, it. still one or two items that you're still yeah, looking still, for. Still, um, and, and as and when they uh, Still a work appear. in progress, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, yeah. that, I mean, that's, yeah, it's fascinating. But again, this has been going on for 18 years. How many guys would have operated this then? They, they had a, f a crew of, uh, in fact, in there is a book somewhere and, um, that stipulates the, I think the, there was a crew of five. Oh, right. So you had a, um, a commander, a gun layer, a loader, um, and a couple of other guys. And every one of them was trained how to fire the gun. So if the gun layer, as they called him, got injured or killed, yeah. somebody could replace him out of the f five blokes. Every, they could every, still operate they could all, it. Yeah, they, they could still, still operate, operate it with one last man yeah. if it, if he had to. Yeah, you know. But um, it's funny because it's a by the standards of some of the German guns, it's a tiny little thing. Yeah. It's a two pounder. Um, 
bit of a pea shooter really well, and awful, very awful lot of engineering yeah so. very over engineered but built a bit like a swiss rock watch yeah so um, very nice. but again early war this one's dated 1940 and i think by that time they were kind of being replaced by 17 and 25 pounders you oh, know right. the bigger stuff yeah but i just i do love this early war nice. kind of rare stuff yeah it's, well it, it, it's, it's lovely to have two pieces together exactly yeah yeah very nice and in fr just in front is a three inch mortar which is um, an, and a, a Vickers 303 oh, uh, yes. water cooled machine gun, yes, heavy that, machine gun. Yeah, that's nice. 